Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. If you like this video, comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. You can also consider becoming a member to support the channel. Alright, let's get started. Now we do have this equation 2 to the power x minus 2 to the power y equals 1984. Now, I know that some of you might be guessing the answer here and try to find it, you know, by guess and check, but that's not the point. The point is what method we're going to use to solve for x and y. You know that we talked about Diophantine equations in detail before, I gave you some strategies that we can use, and this type of Diophantine equation is actually the one of the hardest ones because the variables in the exponent, so these are exponential Diophantine equations. Compared to the polynomial ones, these are harder. But for this one, it's more important to focus on the journey than the destination. All right? Having said that, let's dive into the solution. Now, here's what I'm going to do. First, I want you to notice that 2 to the power x minus 2 to the power y is a positive quantity. So we have a positive difference. What is that supposed to mean? It means that 2 to the power x is greater than 2 to the power y. Great. Now, since 2 to the power x is an increasing function, this implies that x is greater than y. Beautiful. Now, how does that help me? Since x is greater than y, their difference is going to be positive. So I'm going to assume that x minus y is equal to k, where k is a positive integer. And I'm going to go ahead and substitute this into my equation, but I don't have an x minus y, no problem. I can just solve for x and replace x with y plus, y plus k in my equation. So let's go ahead and do that and see what happens, okay? So replace x with y plus k and then minus 2 to the power y is equal to 1984. Okay, cool. Now, this process makes this equation factorable. How? You could write the left-hand side as 2 to the power y times 2 to the power k minus 2 to the power y and then the answer. Now notice that 2 to the power y is a common factor, so we can take it out and this gives us the following factorization. Now, how does this help? Well, it does help because we noticed that the left-hand side, initially we were given the difference of two powers of two, but now this is much better because we were able to write it as a product, and one of the factors is a power of two, which is nice, which is kind of expected, right? And the other one is one less than a power of two. So that's interesting, right? So if I'm able to factor 1,984, into two factors, then I can do something about this. So let's go ahead and factor this number. You know, I can write it as 2 times 992, and then 992 is basically 2 times 496, and 496 is 2 times 248, and 248 is 124 times 2, and notice that 124 can be written as 4 times, you know, 31, and 4 can be written as 2 times 2. So we did the factor tree here, Notice that we have a lot of twos in the prime factorization. Of course, 31 is also prime, but notice that we're getting a lot of twos here. How many twos? Six twos, right? So we can basically write this as two to the power y multiplied by two to the power k minus one is equal to 1,984, which can be written as two to the power six multiplied by 31. So what's so cool about that? Well, take a look at this. Since we only have powers of 2 and a prime number, there's only one way to write the product on the left-hand side as the product of a power of 2 and 1 less than a power of 2. And the right-hand side was also written that way. So one-to-one -one correspondence, everything looks good. We can proceed. Which means that y is equal to 6. And from here, k is equal to 5. All right? Because if you set... This is equal to 31, you get 32, and this, this is 2 to the fifth power. Great. So I now know that y is equal to 6 and k is equal to 5. So what? I haven't found x yet, right? But remember, our assumption was that x is equal to y plus k, because x is greater than y, so their difference is positive, so on and so forth. Well, if I know k and y, I can find x. So from here, we get x is equal to 6 plus 5, which is 11. All right? So I basically got my answer, even though, you know, it's easy to guess and check, 
I just wanted to show you the, the method here, the strategy, the factoring strategy, because this strategy is used a lot with exponential equations, which you will see some examples of later on. All right. So this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, take care, be safe, and bye-bye.